Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have our very special guest, Mark Amell, here. He has a podcast uh, on our channel, and he is part of our podcast community, and he is excellent when it comes to marketing consulting, and today he's going to talk about time management and using it efficiently, and so I'm very excited. Now, before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to the Happy Wellness Expo. They're going to be in Livingston, New Jersey. They're going to have over 100 exhibitors, and they welcome everybody, and they still have a couple more tables and a little bit more space left, so if you're interested, it'll be in the description box, and you can give him a call, and uh, they'll be happy to help you, and if you're interested in natural products and listening to different technologies and learn a little bit more about them, you know, give them a call and uh, stop by. They'd love to have you. All right, Mark, I am so excited to have you back on the show. You know, this is great. I, I enjoy so much when we talk because you have such great advice. Now, when it comes to time management and using your time efficiently, you know, it could be very hard for many people because so many people have so many things to do during the day. They want to get everything accomplished, but sometimes they just don't know how to spread their, their time out wisely. So tell us a little about the proper ways of using time management and how it can help us grow. It's it's easy to get distracted and have all kinds of things going on. Um, one of the things I keep in the back of my mind is you can't scale a mess. Mm -hmm. You can't reach you can't reach your goal if you're so distracted that you don't get anything done. And a lot of people don't realize how their day's gone. They're tired at the end of the day, and they said. I think I worked hard, but I don't know what I did. Yeah. So the first thing I try to tell people is do a journal and write down everything you did for the day. Mm -hmm. And it not only helps you at the end of the day, look and see where you spent your time, but it makes you accountable for your time. Right. And the other I guess the other technique that I use is when you're working on something, you can get it done twice as fast if you're focused. So if something pops into your head, I have a notepad that's open. I just write it down. I go back to focus. I don't let, I don't think about it. I don't let it distract me. Right. And keeping that focus is good. How they're related to marketing and growing your business is that you have you set a goal of where you want to be say at the end of the year right and when you what I do is for the week I say okay I want to I want to take care of these tasks and then I evaluate whether those tax tasks are helping me reach that goal or not right they're not reaching that goal then put it to next week if somebody is, of course, if somebody is waiting for you to respond to it, then yeah, it is helping you reach that goal. So sometimes you'll find tasks that, you know, two months later are still just kind of hanging out there, but they weren't a priority of getting it done. Right. I think you have to evaluate all that. Um, you also have to look at your body cycle. You know, if a lot. Of, I'm smarter in the morning. You know, I can focus a little easier than when mm -hmm. I get tired. So I do tasks that require more thinking in the right. morning. Um, tasks like programming. For me, I've been programming 40 years. You know, it's oh, easy. Wow. But I can also, at the end of the day, my I don't have any phone calls. So I can get in, it's quiet, and I can work. Right. So programming at night usually works for me, but find out whatever works best for you. Um, that log is going to, is really going to help you and make you self accountable. It's I've worked out the house for 35 years, so mm -hmm. I'm used to all the distractions and it's like, Oh, you can run to the store. You're not accountable, you know, except to yourself or, right. you know, you have somebody else say, oh, can you go pick up, run this air and you work at home, you're, you know, you don't do anything all day, right? It, you know, you have to treat it like a business. Right. 
some people, they actually get up, get dressed like they're going to work and have an office, you know, a spare bedroom or something. That's their office. And they tell other members of the family that I'm working, you know, leave me right. in a nice way, of course. But, <laughs> um, you know, if that helps you get into the routine, then that's do that. You know, right. I have. I have puppies running all over, so it's, you know, I'm my desk in the middle of it, all the chaos, but I've, mm -hmm. I'm used to it. I, I've done it for so long. Right. And again, when you're working, it is good to help have people support you around there. Yeah. One of the, I mean, a couple of the stories when you work in an office is the boss used to come around and just throw tasks randomly. Mm -hmm. This one person put a list of tasks, um, taped it to the outside of his door and said, these are my current tasks and priority. If you want me to do something else, just tell me where it falls in. Right. Making the boss aware that you can't drop yourself, you know, drop what you're doing to make that change and pivot. Right. I find that the journal is really good because I, I started that last year and it made me realize what I was doing during the day, how much I got accomplished, where I was putting my time. And it made me realize also, as you know, I realized also when by doing the journal, it's like, wow, I did do a lot of work, you know, and I didn't drive myself crazy. Like if I didn't get everything done that I wanted to get done, I saw that I, I did accomplish a lot of things. And I was like, okay, there's always tomorrow too. And that kind of took a little bit of the stress off too, is I, I, I got to see all the things I accomplished. They were the things I wanted to get done. Maybe I didn't get everything done, but then I put those things to the next day and I didn't beat myself over the head about it. No, and you can look back and say, yeah, I did do a good day's work. I accomplished more than I thought. Because if right. you don't know what you've accomplished, it's hard to give yourself those brownie points at the end of the day. Right, right. So what, it, go ahead. Oh, no, I was going to say, what what tools do you think, if a person is really like all over the board and they just don't know how to manage their time, like what are some ways that you think would be really beneficial? Now we have the journal. And what are some other ways that people can start really organizing their time well? I use Calendly. Mm -hmm. And what that does is I put in meetings. And I also use it to block off time that I'm going to work on customers or I'm going to work on customer support. I'm going to work on this project. And I block out the time for myself. So when I send out a Calendly link, you know, I tell people that go ahead and pick a time that's open. Right. And I know you use Calendly too. Yeah, I do. It helps a lot. Calendly runs my life. And <laughs> in the morning I put, you know, I put a set of alarms like for three minutes before each meeting. Right. So it goes off. I don't have to sit and think about, oh, it's 45 minutes to my next meeting and um, okay, now it's 42 minutes to my next meeting. I don't have to look at the clock because I know the alarm's going to go off. Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that helps a lot also. That helps a lot also. You, you want to clear your head to just work on what you're focusing on. The other thing I did when I, when I started looking at tasks, I went back through a few weeks in my calendar and I, I was finding that I was doing 20, 20 hour meetings a week. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay, this is where my week is going. And I didn't get anything done. I had eight meetings today, but, you know, was it the most productive? And I started cutting back on on some of the meetings and evaluating if the meetings were really helping my goal. You know, I in teaching the management classes, I enjoy helping people and I'll never stop doing that. But yeah you can't do 10 hours a week on helping people and not get your stuff done either. Exactly. Exactly. So once I started getting into my calendar, you know, I was realizing that, okay, we need to make a shift here. And that's helped a lot. Yeah. Actually cut back on the, the hours that I'm working in a day. Now, when you were doing your meetings, because a lot of times, a lot of us have a lot of meetings. Um, 
how did you determine what meetings were really productive and what meetings that you really needed to cut back on and maybe not do so many of? So I look at it if it's going to help my end goal. You know, my personality, I love helping people. And it's, you know, I help them walk through, I'll create them a marketing plan and, you know, see what's not working for them. And I enjoy that. Yeah. I have to limit that. On the meetings themselves, you want to send the people that are coming to the meeting an agenda, say, tell them to prepare this, you know, we're going to talk about these things, you know, make sure you've got your ducks on the row so we can be the most efficient during the meeting. Set the time that you start and start and stop. Right. That you if you get into a situation where you've got 10 people and one starts talking about the weather in New Hampshire or whatever, you know, you can say, Hey, you know, that that's nice. I used to live up there, but um, let's make sure we hit the end of this agenda. Or if the agenda is running short, then, you know, take a few minutes, but you, this is helping you get control of it and everybody knows what to expect and be prepared. Right. So instead of an hour meeting, you you can break it down to like half hour meetings. Right. I really find that, you know, I was kind of surprised at that too. I like to talk to people and get to know them first um, before uh, when I was doing, when I brought that first program to the military, I was doing a lot of profiling. And I tend to like to know people and get to understand them so I can talk to them better and help them better. But right. you have to also limit that, you know, oh, really? I got five minutes for an introduction or seven minutes and I can watch the clock as they go. Um, but it really, if everybody's on the same page, your meetings can be a lot more efficient. They don't have to be um, not personal. Right. You no, know, but everybody's time is, you know, is valuable. Mm -hmm. So I do that a lot for meetings. Um, some, you know, there's things that you like to do and it's like, oh, I don't, I know I need to take out the garbage. Oh, I don't feel like working this minute. So let me go take a nice stroll and take yeah. out the garbage for 15 minutes, you know, and those breaks are okay, but it's really focusing on what you did. Right. But meetings, you can help help a lot if you know what to expect and be prepared for it. And not only you, but send that agenda to everybody else that's attending. Right. I think that's a great idea. You know, I think a lot of times when you're talking to people, you get off track and then you have all these other responsibilities that you need to attend to as well. And they don't get done because you get off track and it's so easy to get off track. And, uh, you know, what are some ways, you know, like you mentioned, you intervened and you're like, okay. And you got everybody back on, on, on the, on the path, you know, and there is, there are some authors that talk about that, you know, stick into the white line. And when you get off the white line, you get off the path, how to go bring everybody back onto that white line. And do you have any other suggestions also on how to keep everybody in track or, or do you have any suggestions like other suggestions about time management that are really efficient that you've seen a huge change in your, in your own business, you know, by implementing certain ways? If, if everybody has the agenda, it's not real hard. You can say we're behind on the agenda. Um, otherwise you get into, okay, we only got half of what I wanted to get done. So when are we going to meet again? Right. And in I always follow up at a meeting, say, okay, mm -hmm. this is what we talked about. You know, got any questions, just put it to them so they can summarize the meeting. Right. If, um, if you have to meet again, or it's a longer project, a bigger project, set mm -hmm. the day and the time before the end of the meeting. Right. Don't start sending out, you know, 10 emails and, okay, what's good for you? Right. You know, for what I do is when somebody says you want to get together and I say, here's my calendar, calendar link. 
mm-hmm. you know, pick a time so we don't have to go back and forth about what time's good for you and me. Right. And I do that on everybody that wants to to set a meeting. I just let them use my calendar to pick a time. Right. I think and that's excellent. When I get it back, it's in my calendar. And I'll probably write a note so that I can be prepared before I talk to the person. There's, um, you know, little things that we used to do and having um, errand day. Mm-hmm. You know, list your errands and try to leave, you know, a few errands, is for, put them all together. So if you're out. You know, for me, I'm getting older, it takes an hour to get ready. So I have to get ready. And then here's my list of things to do and what I'm doing. And I go out and I just go down the list. You don't have to go out and get distracted by a lot. You just go out and get things done. Right. Having a, you know, if you're having a particularly busy day and you don't have time to cook, then you have food delivered and it's, it's easy. It's gets kind of expensive if you do it every night. So don't do that. But you know. <laughs> the other thing is I eat a lot of um, fresh fruits and vegetables and all. And sometimes I'll take three hours on Sunday, cook everything up, do meal prep, cook right. it, put it in the fridge and it's ready to go. So I don't have to take a while of time, but I enjoy cooking. You know, right. so I can prepare to do that all at once. As far as paper goes, you know, handle it as few times as possible. Delegate it, um, act on it. If it's two minutes and get it done, I'm doing, you know, you set aside an hour to go through your paperwork, file it or throw it away. Right. I was fortunate enough to grow up in an environment where where my mother was like, oh, you didn't use this and two months we're going to throw it away you know cleaning with a garbage bag (laughs) you don't want to have to look at the same piece of paper 10 times to decide if it's valuable or not right exactly exactly delete it file it and if if it's filed by project and you're working on that project then you can go through the papers a little bit more carefully and say combine the papers throw them out right because you're thinking about what's in that project um, it's looking through for and then you get in into the same thing really with project management you know when you have a project to do what is the project going to look like in your end goal for the project right Break down the the pieces and the tasks within each pieces so you can assign those. Right. And anybody that's working on the project with them, send that list out. You've got your your project plan. Yeah. And you don't have to, every time you have a meeting, you don't have to start at the beginning. Okay, what was our project goal? Okay, this is Mm -hmm. our goal. Who's doing these pieces? But if everything is laid out, you know, so that you can follow that path to completion, you know, what pieces are slowing down? I can't do, I can't do piece C until B is done. Okay. Let's make sure we do them in the right order. Yeah. They're documented correctly. You can just reread the document. You don't have to rethink it all. Right. Right. You know, it helps. I'm a programmer. You know, I think, (laughs) I think that way anyways. Yeah. Um, and make sure one of the things about the projects in this environment is you're looking at pain points. Mm-hmm. So your project in order to sell, it has to help somebody's pain point. Right. So put down the pain points. Am I still solving that person's pain point? If you right. create the marketing material, you show that, okay, if you're, if you're not sleeping at night because you're not getting enough leads you know, we understand your problem. These are some of the solutions. And then this is why I can help you do that solution. And then give me a call. You want to bond with that person, right? So it's follow the steps through in that customer journey. And look at when you start pulling a project together, not only the, the flow of it, but where are you getting your data from? Right. 
you know, what tools, if you need to use a tool that's a couple thousand dollars, but it takes you three weeks to learn, put that into your schedule so it doesn't affect the end result. Right. Um, I like to use storyboarding because when people learn, like when I'm writing a webinar, mm -hmm. it's, I like to use a storyboard and tell a story and keep that person's engaged. First, yeah. you're going to give them, build that curiosity. Then you want to tell them about you, about why they should listen to you. Right. Take the journey down, you know, through three of the pivotal points. But I had a one time I had a webinar. It was 150 slides and I had them from one house to the other because I was walking down the the path of in making sure it flowed and I kept them engaged. Yeah. Even things to, okay, this is why we're talking about them, given reasons to keep learning. Right. So I'm, I'm a big fan of storyboarding. Um, and then each of those pieces, like I said, you break them down into the tasks and evaluate each of the tasks. Is that going to help me reach the end goal or is that just, fluff because I want to do it right <laughs> um, and you know in the morning when I look at tasks you know if I was up all night working on something or whatever and I'm not as efficient today so I'm going to do tasks that are more time consuming than think wise so right practice, listen to your body yeah but don't save all the hard stuff for last because that's going to affect your schedule eventually. Mm -hmm. um, and make sure you've got, I always think, and we've talked before, I always think in term of long-term customers. You know, I have 15 to 20 year customer retention, which means I don't have to market if I don't want to. I can spend more time with my customers. Right. Got to make sure those customers are happy if, your residual income is paying your bills. Right. So make sure that they have an adequate amount of time. It's easy to get caught up in all the shiny stuff, right? Oh, yeah. And, oh, this sounds like a good idea and spend a week learning something new that doesn't apply. Yeah. And going down that YouTube rabbit hole, as they say. <laughs> So, but again, break out your hours, you know, and take it easy on yourself. Some days you're better than others, but, right. um, you know, it's, it's hard when you're writing that list and you said, oh, I spent the last two hours watching Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Sometimes I guess you got to, if you got to, but, you know, make sure it's a choice is what I'm saying. Right. Right. I think, I think when you have time management too, you can prevent also, um, you know, um, have a better work-life balance and, and prevent that, that draining, you know, so many people get so drained out and it, it, a good cause may be because they don't manage their time properly too. It is. And there's something called, um, the offer triangle. Okay. So you want, there's three pieces to it. One is you're giving your customer good results because that's when they'll stay around. They don't right. care about all the fluff and all the other stuff. They care about getting results. Exactly. And then your personal time, you know, are you, are you happy in your personal life? Do you have enough time for that? Yeah. And then if the offer is scalable. Right. If um, you have all those three in place, then your business is, your offer is scalable. Right. To make your business scalable, you need to walk away. I've helped right. people go from the 500 to 800,000 a year to over that million dollar wall. But it's, the, the reason is, is that the owner has to do everything. Yeah. You have to build your business so that you can walk away and take a weekend or a week vacation and your business doesn't fall apart. Right. And then it becomes that you can sell your business to somebody else. 
Yeah. You need to start thinking about when is it the time to start training my replacement, even though you don't not going to be replaced, you know, anytime sooner when you want to. Right. That will at least give you the choice. Right. So if you scale, if you make your business scalable, you know, you have that break in the, in your business and your personal and your, the scalability, then you can. One of the things that stops uh, scalability is doing one-on-ones because how many one-on-ones can you do during the week? Exactly. Exactly. So if you're able to, you know, when I teach different management classes, I can bring 30 people into the management class. Exactly. If I was going to teach them one-on-one, I could, that would max out. Right. So where are your sticking points? You know, if each customer, when I do it done for you, requires eight hours a month or 10 hours a month, I'm maxing out at 20 customers. Right. So do I want to continue to do that? Or how do I not do that? Right. I can subcontract out pieces of the project. I have, you know, somebody that's where I work with to do Google ads. Right. Who's really good and he's becoming very trusted. So instead of me spending more time doing Google ads, I find always looking for people that are better than me on different right. areas. They can do it faster and and cheaper, really, because of the number of hours. Right. Mm-hmm. So look at all your tasks that can be broken out and how you can delegate and who to delegate to. Right. One of the first things you can do is get somebody to do admin, you know, mm-hmm. a part-time admin person. Yeah. To go through your, I get 400 emails a day now, you know, go through your 400 emails. Right. Give her criteria, say, no, these people just delete, you know, these people send over to me to review. Right. So just responding to it, responding to um, social media, you know, request, you know, some of them you have to do, but there's others that can be personalized from an assistant. Yeah, for sure. So what That's one of the first people because it's easier to, it's more defined. It's more, you know, set in concrete. These are the steps. Then you can start getting into, um, as you grow, get two salespeople. Right. The reason you want to hire two is they'll compete with each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so That's a good you, idea. You hire two people. What does it look like on your fulfillment? Say you get, you know, a customer, what is their fulfillment? How long does it take you to do there? And where can you cut there? Mm-hmm. One of the worst things you can do is get, until you have your systems all in place, you go, I'm going to go throw spaghetti against the wall and you throw it out and you want lead gens and all of a sudden you got 20 new customers and you're like, yeah, that's great, but um, the money's great, but how do I keep them all happy so they stay more than a week? Exactly. So you start getting into time management really is about how your system and your flow and um, where do you put your priorities. But if you don't have a strong foundation, you can't really add a lot of people to it because your your company's just going to break down or you're working 18 hours a day and you'll break down all that. Yeah. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's surprising to me because I taught time management from a marketing classes and I hadn't really thought about it. But really, if you don't have your time under control, it's hard to go else, you know. And yeah, if you can say, yeah, I can work six, 18 hours a day for a short while. But if you haven't gotten that under control, it's going to be a long while. Right. <laughs> it's not that short. No, it's not. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And give you time to build habits. You know, I have uh, even small things like instead of making coffee in the morning, I, I fill it up, ready to go. I hit the button and it, it's gone. But it was 
muscle memory that I would turn it on. So at night when I'm getting the coffee machine ready to go, I, I keep turning it on because that was muscle memory. So now right. I'm working on not doing that. They say 21 days for a habit, but I'm stubborn. So we'll see. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Now, if you had to take all these things that we talked about today, what how what do you want to emphasize to people, um, our listeners, to help them really get on track when it comes to time management? What would be some of the some of the points, some of the takeaways you'd really like to really uh, emphasize on? I think setting your goals, setting your priorities, but until you start journaling, even if it's for a couple of weeks, you don't. You don't know what you, why you're tired at the end of the day and you beat yourself up for not doing enough when right. you, you look at that journal and you say yes. Yeah. So I think the I think the most important thing, even though you know, people kind of laugh it off or whatever, but to do that journal and it helps you the most to give perspective on what you do during the day. Mm -hmm. It's it's something I've used for a long time. I think it's very effective. I've been doing it for a while now, over a year. I've been making um making a conscious effort to to set a new date, new page, and write down everything. And I, I've seen a difference, you know, and it, it keeps you your mind also organized, you know, like you you you, you really you, it stays fresh in your head, okay. I did X, Y, and Z today. Now I got to do, you know, now I got to do this, you know, the next day and this the next day. And and it, it kind of makes you realize, you know, what you really need to emphasize and what you really need to push aside, I think. I think focusing skills too, like I have a notepad open, something pops in that doesn't belong in my current task. I just write it down, go back to it. It's right. what's hard now is we're, if you think about it, we're being trained to have five second attention spans. Yeah. And you really have to focus on breaking that. I mean, for marketing, you, you work on that and you say, okay, you got five seconds to get their interest. That's great. But when you're trying to focus for 45 minutes or half an hour and not be distracted, I mean, right. that's a skill I think that a lot of us have to relearn. Oh, yeah. It's, you know, it's, it's okay. The other thing is, is if you're trying to learn something, um, watching a video on it, mm -hmm. hits a different part of the brain than actually reading on it. Yeah. So on my landing pages, I have short videos, but I also have, um, written text for those that like to read the the written texts, but right. have them help each other. And, you know, spend some time reading. Um, but getting getting that habit of that refocus back right more efficient. I agree. I agree. You know, I, I think it's it's good to 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 read and not just watch videos because I think people pay pay too much emphasis on on watching videos because it's easier and their time you know their time retention is, has decreased but it, it's good to do both you know I get a lot out of reading and it stays in my head very you know I it I I enjoy personally I enjoy reading when you read you have to think about it when you're watching a video you know people are on the phone talking or it's easy to get distracted and not get as engaged, I think, too. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Oh, I, I agree would, with you. I would encourage people to, I think Calendly is like 10 or $15 a month. I can't remember. But, you know, get a Calendly and set up your calendar. And don't go back and forth what time's good for you. Send them your link. And yeah. Live by your calendar because it's really going to help you stay organized. You can think about it. Yes. There's, um, and think about what, there's a lot of the, um, I don't want to go too deep, but if you think about before you 
say at the end of the day, you look over what you're going to do the next day. Right. See if you're prepared for it or not. Mm -hmm. Just looking over, thinking about the next day is going to help you be more prepared that next morning. Oh, yeah. A hundred percent. And, you know, I do that. One of the, the things that I do before I quit is I'm like, look at what I did for the day. But I also look at, am I ready for tomorrow or not? Right. Right. And, and do then, you do you also reward yourself and you maybe give yourself, you know, a little self-love at the end of the day? Like when you see you, you accomplish so much, you know, instead of just like rushing to do, you know, like, uh, you know, thinking about what you have to do tomorrow. Do you kind of give you got yourself a little self-love or maybe reward yourself for getting so many things accomplished? A lot of what I do is rewarding myself is, you know, I have four puppies. So mm -hmm. I go out in the yard and I may take more time because I've got that time to do it, you know, right. I did it today. Um, or maybe that's the time to watch a, a Netflix or watch something that's, you know, would just seem to be a waste of time, but you got to reward yourself too. But yeah. I enjoy spending time with the animals and going out and, and playing with them and take more time, tire them out, me out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I think everybody has their hobbies and what they like, like to do, you know, spend more time with your hobby. Right. Um, and don't beat yourself up too bad. It's it's all, you know, when you have animals, you know, it's it's all positive um, experiences. Yes. And it's, okay, I didn't do so good today. Tomorrow's going to be better. Right. Yesterday I did really good, so give myself a break. But it's all that. Think about the positive and, and change your attitude. You can, when I worked in a, I programmed a telemarketing room. Um, the guy put mirrors in their little corners. They're on yeah. their phone. And you know what had this on that written on the mirror, would you would you buy from this person? <laughs> and that that's really true. If if you sit down and you know, Zoom helps you a lot. I get to see that person. I'm like, oh no, okay. But um if you look at that person you're talking to, mm-hmm. You know, give them the courtesy of their full attention. Yes. And prepare yourself that look in the mirror and say, do I really want to talk to, would I want to talk to me? Right. You know, I like that. It's, it's true. Get them engaged, but, you know, make sure you put your, your first, your good foot forward, um, well, I've seen some people go to Zoom meetings in a, a raggy T-shirt. I'm like, you know, how much does this person really care that we're meeting? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I thought that was genius, the guy putting the, the mirrors in the telemarketing booths. No, I like that. I like that. That's a great idea. I like that a lot. Wow, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Mark, um, for giving this this uh, information today. I think it's so important when it comes to market and management that people really have a grasp on what they're doing and organizing their time and and what you know what comes first and what's a what's a priority and what's not a priority and different techniques they can use throughout the day. And I think one of the things that you emphasized is communication is key. You know. And I think people have to really, when they have a team or they're working with other people, communication is key. Being, you know, really managing your time, but also, you know, it, you know, making sure that everybody understands where, you know, what their responsibilities are, what they need to do, and you get that by communicating with each other. And uh, but not not spend too much time, like you said, on it, but just enough so everybody knows what they need to be what they need to do and what needs to get done. Yeah, and by sending out, if you haven't done it before, trying to send out an agenda before you meet, you'd be surprised at how much better your meeting goes. Right, exactly. I think that's a good point. That's a very good point. It's wow. I appreciate you having me here. 
Oh, you're very welcome. This has been great. I think it's so important. So many people struggle with time management. It's talked about all the time. You know, um, people, you know, have a hard time. People, you know, pay other people just to learn how to manage their time well, because it's, it's, it's something that people just, they feel overwhelmed with life responsibilities and everything going on. And they just don't know what to really focus on, what's going to get them, you know, further in, in life and in their business, you know, so these type of tips are, I think are, are amazing because it helps people to really break everything down and tools they can use to really get themselves on track. So I think this was great. I think, I think you gave some really wonderful tips and uh, these are things that people could use on an everyday basis. And I love the fact that about journaling and about organizing things and about communicating and sending out agendas and everything, you know, these are all really powerful tools and candidly, especially because I have that, like you said, and it helps a great deal when you have everything organized in one big calendar and you can see exactly what you're doing. That's one of the first things I do when I wake up is I look on my candidly, what do I have to do today? And it, you know, it really gives me a clear idea of what my responsibilities are. Yeah, first thing I do is set my alarm so I don't miss them. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, this has been great, Mark. Thank you so much for coming back on the show. And everybody, don't forget, Mark is from DMA Consulting, and he has his own podcast, and, and he comes on The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Plus, he has his own podcast, and he's part of our podcast community. So if you'd like to learn more about uh, marketing and different ways to enhance your business, especially if you're a small or medium-sized business. Mark loves to help people grow. So check out all his stuff on our site and you'll be amazed of how much you could learn from Mark. He's an amazing person. I've learned a lot just by listening to him and having conversations with him. So check him out. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day, Mark. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.